Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Daniel, and this is Naveen, and we're both uh, graduate students at Georgia Tech. Uh, so what we're going to be going over today in our presentation is uh, standardizing OSM pedestrian networks uh, through the research that we conducted um, in our uh, research group. Uh, basically, we found this problem of the uh, existing navigation apps like Apple Maps, Google Maps, don't really account for ADA mobility uh, mode users. You know, you could have sidewalks in a city that anybody could really use, but for a wheelchair, it could be a little more difficult, as shown in the image. Uh, so yeah, the, the challenges really of the navigation applications is that every ADA mobility mode has a unique mobility requirement. Uh, currently, the navigation solutions that we have present day do not meet everyone's needs. And basically, the best manual wheelchair route might not be the best walking route. So through this, there's a lot of design and condition factors that account into uh, basically what is uh, the walking route and what is uh, the difference in that and the manual wheelchair. Uh, so basically, we look at you know network completeness, uh, presence and absence of sidewalks. So as you can see in the image, uh, you could have a sidewalk that suddenly ends and you have a patch of grass. Well, for a normal person walking through, they could do that. But if you're in a manual wheelchair, it's going to be very hard to navigate through that grass. Another factor is basically the network design and then the conditions. Uh, you could have different surface conditions like cracks and other factors that can make it more difficult for somebody in a wheelchair. And then you have cross slope issues, which is basically the area from the road to the street to the sidewalk. Uh, that could also have another kind of issue uh, for crossing streets as well. And then you have missing curb ramps. So if I was to cross an intersection and there's no ramp for me to cross, then that could be difficult if I was uh, in a manual wheelchair. And then we also have real-time issues, such as construction, you know, closing off a sidewalk, or you know, emergency vehicles uh, not really knowing how to navigate around that, um, other methods. So, yeah. so considering all these issues, which Daniel spoke before, like the ITS Forest Project is a uh, intelligent transportation systems joint program office initiative, and it's up and it is supported by both the Federal Highway Authority and the Federal Transit Agency, and the main goal of this program is to improve mobility and accessibility for the vulnerable uh, population as well as for the undeserved com communities. Uh, so the key thing here is uh, to facilitate complete trips, which is like the key thing here is the first and the last mile connectivity where you go to a bus stop or like you go to a transit center. So this is very interesting for the people with disabilities. Uh, because uh, if you use a Google map, it would tell you like to take a certain route to act, reach the bus stop. But in real life, that wouldn't be the case. The sidewalk would be deteriorated. Uh, or in some cases, you would have a missing patch. Uh, so what we thought was to create uh, this network development and workflow where you establish the network. And then in addition to it, you assess the network's design and condition. And then finally, you assign all these different assets and its condition uh, through the uh, to the uh, pedestrian network through a link-based impedance calculation. And finally, you can use this uh, final network with the impedance to kind of uh, provide the routing solutions. So uh, this is kind of a demonstration of the same. You can see here the first map which you see, uh, it is kind of like just using a travel time only impedance. Uh, which is just using a constant speed to kind of calculate the routing. And if you just look at the surface condition, adding impedance based on the surface condition, you can see here the route gets a bit diverted uh, based on the sidewalk's condition. Uh, but on And the final map that you see here, uh, we are factoring in all the design parameters, like if there is a presence or absence of curb ramps. We are also looking at the condition of the curb ramp itself, like is it actually feasible for a person with wheelchair to navigate through the curb ramp. And, as, and you can see a real, realistic route, which is much more different from what you see from like in the first map, which is typically a output from the current navigation applications. So 
to rethink our workflow, what we felt was uh, to create this pedestrian network, we felt OpenStreetMap would be the great opportunity. And then we use field data collection to kind of uh, collect the conditions of the ramp as well as the quality of the surface. And finally, uh, in our research lab, we have something called, we have developed something called STM, which is the space time memory network, which, co uh, which factors in both the spatial as well as the temporal character of the network. And finally, we use OpenTrip Planner to create this uh, navigation application. Uh, so in this process, OpenStreet brings a lot of benefits. The first is it's open source which means that it's very scalable and it, this can be, like the STM architecture can be deployed nationwide uh, without uh, uh, trying to invest again on creating a system architecture. And the second is it's very dynamic. Like people tend to map these spaces uh, based on the real time conditions. So you don't have to deploy a team, like a net team to kind of assess this condition on a regular basis. and in most of the metropolitan area, the sidewalk network is al almost complete. And then OSM's uh, network is suitable to open to planner as well, which is what we have been using for creating this shortest route simulation. So though it has a lot of advantages, like the main case for improving the standard, like creating a standard is that uh, the first structure you see here, this is kind of what we mostly find uh, in the sidewalk network in OSM for most of the suburbs or like in uh, in places in non-metropolitan areas. And what we wanted to do is convert it into the uh, network graph, which you see in the second. Because the current issues are the pedestrian ways are too long. So when you apply impedance to each of these links, having a longer link will mean that the entire impedance is going to be applied to the entire way. And then they usually don't serve a logical termini. And finally, um, since it uh, doesn't have an existing standard, like uh, many of the spatial node locations are always inaccurate. So these, uh, we have proposed 10 uh, standards for structuring the OSM pedestrian links. The first is extracting the crossing links from uh, long pedestrian ways, which you can see here. So we, we have found a lot of places where the pedestrian uh, sidewalk link continues on the road itself. So the first step is to make sure that that is broken down into a crossing link. And second, sometimes the link is broken down, but it is not, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, sometimes the link isn't broken down. So in these points, it is very crucial to break down the link into a logical link. And the th third place is here is that like even though there is a split link, sometimes the tagging is, uh, done wrong, so it is very key to make sure that every one of the crossing links are tagged appropriately. And fourth one, um, uh, though OSM um, mentions that like if the link is not connected to the network, it flags an issue, but in many places where we were uh, looking into editing the network, we found that uh, many of these crossing links m missed a node where it uh, meets the road network. And finally, uh, we also uh, found a lot of places where the, uh, when you use a lot of tools like Rapid, uh, they tend to be very accurate in places where you have a sidewalk, but they tend to miss the crossing links. So it is very crucial to make sure that these crossing links are also traced out. And uh, uh, a really interesting case here is the pork shop islands because uh, there is no set sa standard which we were able to find for pork shop islands, so people tend to trace it in uh, multiple ways. Uh, so what we wanted to do is to make sure that it is very simplified. So you just have a node in the center of the pork shop island, uh, which connects to like multiple crossing links, which then in turn connect to the uh, sidewalk network. And uh, in both in the case of like mid-block crossings as well as the median uh, refuge islands, uh, the one thing which we typically find is that the sidewalk is not split in those regions, though there is a crossing link added in those areas. So what we felt is it is crucial to break the sidewalk link in that particular point to make sure that the impedance are uh, applied appropriately. And finally, make sure you trace any new sidewalk. 
so to give the demonstration of like what we find in the uh, pork chop islands so you can see this the first image we see here is what we propose to to be much more simple so you, in this network you have only six nodes and six links but this is typically what we find in many places where people tend to add these more extraneous links so when you use your field data collection to get these asset information and apply it to the links it's it will be really hard for someone to know like with which link you have to apply those uh, corresponding impedance especially in places where you tend to automate it in a city wide scenario and yeah these are like some of the examples which we felt where you add where these more extraneous links tend to like you know create a lot of issues and finally dwelling into a pro project itself so this is what we have been doing in the county of gwinnett in georgia uh, so this is what the existing osm uh, sidewalk network was there in in september 30 2023 and in a span of like 4 months with uh, by de with deploying like almost 25 grad, uh, research assistants uh, we were able to complete the network in this study area and uh, one thing in this stat which i want to highlight here is like you can see the 1564 links is what we initially had it in the osm network but without adding any new link just by disaggregating them into logical links we were able to increase the link count from like almost by 6 605% which is huge so you uh uh the thing is you don't need to disaggregate these links when you use only travel time as a impedance factor but when you are trying to uh factor in all these different assets it is very crucial that these links are disaggregated into a much more granular scale as much granular as possible so at every decision point if the link is broken down it makes sure that the impedance which we apply is not getting transferred to the rest of the links as well so that is what uh we have done so far and moving forward uh we want to give a give it like a summary saying like you know disaggregation of long wave is highly recommended though it's not required for time based impedance it is very crucial for a link based design condition impedance routing um uh avoiding uh, extraneous avoid inserting extraneous links is very important because it makes the architecture like the system architecture much more simple and it uh, helps in the longer run and finally uh, what we feel is that it is very important to uh, create new tags into the osm's architecture which is specific to ada mobility modes because while extracting data from osm the one key issue which we faced is trying to identify the links which are safe for pedestrians the ones which are safe for uh, wheelchair users one which is safe for like different ada modes so what we feel is it is very important to create these new tags which are like compile into ada modes and finally uh, it is it would be great if we can also uh, uh, create a tracking and flagging methodology which not only focuses on like a the automobile mo uh, network but also for the pedestrian network and that ends our presentation yeah yeah so because like uh in a in a routing scenario like for example uh so uh if you if you if you can look at in this scenario like how the impedance work is there is a ramp here and then there is a ramp here so what we do is we tend to associate that ramps uh condition to the corresponding crossing link so uh yeah yeah so that's how we operate and so in this example though the 
ramps are like totally further apart, it's easy to like differentiate them. But in many places, what we feel is they are pretty much close to each other, and we use high differential like high uh, high fidelity GPS devices to kind of like uh, identify the different ramps and curb cuts. So in that scenario, having these extraneous links means that it it makes it difficult to associate it like to which point, like do you associate it to the crossing or do you associate it to the uh, the sidewalk link? So that makes it a bit hard. We're open to answering any questions <laughs> after, and then we have another presentation tomorrow on yeah. the actual field data collection that we conducted as well.